Listen, the best thing that happened to me is coming to America. Don't ask me how. There's so many things that are good about this country. It is high time I address some of it. Most people make videos about America this, America that, crime and all. Listen, sit down tight, watch this video to the end because it's going to be raw and edited. These are solely my opinion. You can feel free and air yours in the comment section as well. I'm going to be very direct, very plain, not polishing anything at all. Just going to give it to you straight as it is in my life and what I'm experiencing. My name is Priscilla Kuma. I come from Ghana, West Africa. I grew up in Nigeria or your state. I moved to New York State, America, where I work and practice as a registered nurse. I'm also the lead consultant for US RM Pathway Consult, where we help registered nurses, midwives, and psychiatry nurses who want to work in USA and don't know how to go about it. Head to our website, www.usrmpathwayconsult.com if you want to work in America, if you want to take NCLEX and work in America, and we would start your onboarding process. Okay. So, as I said, this is going to be very unscripted. I have made some few points down. I can explain some further, but uh, the narrative that keeps going around, America is not safe, the crime is too much, should I go to America, should I go to UK? The choice is entirely yours, okay? The choice is entirely yours. You know your personal goals and that of your family. We cannot make a decision for you. But this is the country I am in. This is the country that is working for me and my family. And I'm going to tell you so many reasons why America is the America. I came to America and in a matter of three years, I became a citizen. I've been living here for over that. But I suppose the normal knowledge of five years to become a citizen anyway. I became a citizen in three years. Don't ask me how. There are so many information out there. If you don't read, you're not going to find out. So read and don't follow hearsays. Oh my God, am I being too blunt? I hope not. <laughs> okay, so this is my passport. You can see my face there. If you think I'm capping, it's not. This is me right there. This is my passport. Um, as I said, I come from Ghana. That's just a backstory. So why choose America? If you are a nurse watching this, being a nurse alone is like an exit card. It's an opportunity for you to travel to any country in the world that you want because there's no country without a healthcare system. There's no country without a hospital. There's no country without a clinic. They're always going to need nurses. They're always going to need medical professionals. They're always going to need doctors. So being a nurse alone, that having that certificate can open doors for you. I did not come to America through nursing. If you've been following me for years, you know how I got to America anyway. And I want to thank America once more because through America, I got a chance to come to America. What do I mean by that? I don't talk about my personal life on YouTube. I hardly do that. But I've shared before how I came to America. I came to my America through my husband. So America has a program, study abroad, exchange program where students travel to other countries not even other states. You get out of America to go somewhere, acquire some knowledge, integrate with people, learn about the culture, learn about the topic you are studying in school, the course you are studying in school, and live that life for like a semester or two abroad and come back home. So thank, thank you to America for sending one of their students to Ghana to study abroad and several years ago. And that was how I met my husband. So America gave me that opportunity, gave somebody a study abroad opportunity. He came to Ghana to study in Ghana, in University of Ghana, where I was studying nursing. And that is how we met. Fast forward several years, over 13 years ago, and now I'm in America, and I'm an American myself. That is just one advantage of America. Recently, my sister-in-law got a very huge stipend or grant to travel and do research in Ghana and Togo. A lot of money as flights paid for accommodation paid for just to go study and come so the educational system is hands down there are some people who are applying for student visa f1 to come study abroad because 
a certificate from America carries weight, just like how the passport from America carries weight. This blue book I have here can let you go to over 194 countries in the world without stress. If you are even at the airport, as soon as people see this blue book, they accord you their respect. As I said, this is going to be raw and edited, okay? I'm going to be as blunt as possible. So, educational program is perfect. Students' loans are there. That's the downside of it. But what you get and what you can make out of it will clear your student loans in a blink. I know a nurse who worked for 12 months as a travel nurse and cleared the $100,000 student loan she owes the country. You went to school fine, it cost you money, you turned that education around, made money out of it to pay your debt. That is just another angle of it. Okay. People talk about crime, 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 crime. That's why I can't come to US. People call me, email me, text me, friends, family, the crime. People have been living here 60, 70, 80 years, still alive, not down, not shot, not dead yet. The media presence in America is a lot. The small neighborhood you're living in has so many TV stations, radio stations. People are holding camera here and there. So if something happens, they are able to pick it fast. People are dying in your country too. Do you know that? The reason you don't hear about them is because they are not celebrities. They are not politicians. They are not stars. So they are not in the news. That's why you don't hear about it. People are using machete. People are gunning people down. People are shooting people. People are doing all sorts of things. People are dying daily, but you don't hear about it. America is big. One state is like a country. Even New York City alone. If I'm going to New York City, I'll pick a plane. And that is about two hours flight. In, and I also live in New York. So just imagine one country. I always say it's very comparable to the size of Ghana. Ghana is about 33 million. And New York State is about 18 or 21 million. They're about. So just one state is like a country. So when there are, the tendency of crime happening is very high. I don't want to go into the gun laws and stuff and mass shooting is happening. It's disheartening. My heart goes to the families and parents and loved ones who have lost people. But the crime is happening and it's inevitable. And there's crime everywhere. The second main point people make, racism. Racism is everywhere. Even in your home, there are some households, domestic staff that come and work for your house, your driver, your cleaner, and you treat them bad. Because they come from a different part of the country. Or they look different. Or they sound different. Or their culture is different. We tend to look down on them. Tribalism. It's everywhere. Okay? You just have to choose the state wisely. Choose the city wisely. The county. The town. Wherever you're going. Just choose a place where people look and sound like you a little bit. Some people also don't want to be around people who look and sound like them. The choice is entirely yours. They think where people of color... Ah, there's more crime. It all depends on you. It's entirely grace that is watching over all of us. You can be in your room and die at home in Africa. You can be in your room and die in America. You can die everywhere. So the crime is there, tribalism and all, they are there. But there are resilient advantages to America. Let's move on. Healthcare system. The healthcare system is expensive, things are expensive in America, things are expensive everywhere. Times are so hard back home. How much is a dollar in your country, in Nigeria? How much is a dollar to your currency, your CD, Naira, shilling, yen, rand? Things are getting expensive everywhere, thanks to COVID and thanks to the Ukraine-Russian war and all that stuff. Healthcare system is expensive. There are bills you pay when you go to the doctor's office. I have a long list of bills I'm still paying personally. But why do people still travel to America to see a doctor? Why do people still travel to America for kidney transplant, chemotherapy, radiation? People come to America to give birth here and go back. Most of these celebrities, especially Nigerian celebrities, come to America to just give birth so that that child will have what I have here, the blue passport. In this country, when you give birth to a child, the child becomes a citizen. It doesn't happen in most of the countries in Europe. I have friends that were born in UK, but they are not British. But this country gives this opportunity. Did you know that America is the only country in the world that runs the DV lottery, the diversity visa lottery, 
where they bring about 55,000 people a year to America to add to the workforce. There are so many people that are thinking and creating things so much so that there are so many job opportunities that are yet to be filled or cannot be filled because of shortage. The shortage in the restaurants, engineering field, tech, IT, healthcare. You know healthcare already, American need nurses. I've said that a zillion times. I can't say that anymore. I'm tired of saying that. So they do this lottery, bring young people above 18 to come and fill these gaps. America is the only country you meet people from all walks of life. Countries I have not heard before. Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Nepal. You meet people. Yesterday I worked with people. One is from Russia. The other one from another place. We are all from different walks of life. The diversity is a lot. So nobody really owns the country. We are all equal. I'm holding a book. You're holding a book. I'm American. You're American. It does not make me less of American. Is she American? Yes. So the diversity lottery is also there for job opportunities. The, as I said, it's big and there are jobs. So when you come as a nurse, your spouse will definitely find something to do. There's always a job opportunity for somebody if they're determined to do that. Why should I come to America? Why should I come to America? All the other countries people are going to quickly, especially UK. People are going on work visa. When you come to America as a nurse, this video is general, but when you come as a nurse, you get a green card and that green card can be renewed and you can have a 10 year green card. You can apply for a citizenship and become an American if you want to. So you're not going to do the work visa thing. No, 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 no. You get direct green card. You renew it when it's expiring. You can apply for citizenship and then you can also bring your children below 21 years. You can bring your spouse. And a whole lot. So if you're still considering, should I come to America or whatever, it gives you a green card. It gives you citizenship at the end of the day. And when you have children here, they become citizens. Okay? If you remember during COVID, we got some money to support children. Got an amount. I think adults, I don't remember that was 1200 or 1500 or 1800 I just watched a video recently of somebody who invested that money she got, that COVID relief money she got from the government. She invested it and now she's owned a million dollar business. Because of that money and what she used it for. I know people who have several kids at home and then they get money from the government. They get food stamps. I'm not encouraging laziness or sitting at home by this. People on disability, government pays you money. I was on disability for six months. I was getting some token, which is actually more than going to work as a CNA because I was a CNA when I had to go on disability. I was any more sitting at home than even going to work. I am not encouraging laziness and all that stuff by circumstances beyond your control put in that situation just know that you'll be okay there's medicaid there's medicaid those are health insurances that you get if you have maybe a minimum wage or low income background or you're above 65 or you're in disability there are things that will pay for certain things that the system is structured it's an enabling environment they don't just leave you to fall apart those of us who overwork who owe IRS like I do because I work a lot. They take some of that tax return and give to somebody who can't afford the luxury of overworking or earning a, having a job that makes you earn a lot, six figures and stuff like that. So they have a system whereby the gap between the rich and the poor is not wide. Talking about infrastructure, whether in the suburbs, whether in the big city, you still have access to quality road, quality healthcare, Quality educational system, water, electricity, constant supply. Unlike you are either in Accra or you are in Lagos or Abuja or you are in Dar es Salaam. Anybody else that is outside those places are struggling because of bad road. They are struggling. There's no light supply, no drink, good drinking water, no good educational system. So you have to run to the city and send your kids there for good educational system. I had to leave my little town and travel four hours to go to school in the city, the capital of Ghana, Accra. But you can still find good educational system in your little village in America, in your suburb, in your county, wherever you're finding yourself. We are not saying it's perfect here. We are not saying it's rosy here. There are so many reasons why. America is worth considering. America has given some of us a voice to sit here 
very private we don't come on social media we don't post pictures but we are very here we are out sitting out here talking to you being confident america has given the opportunity to establish a consult us are part of consult i saw that vision when i came here i couldn't have done that in in ghana how am i going to get a constant wi-fi how am i going to get these quality gadgets i'm using this iphone that cost me over ten thousand cities so how am i going to afford that as a nurse how much is the nursing salary back home i have other projects I'm into real estate. I have other houses and stuff that I rent out and stuff. I wouldn't have been able to do that with my meager nursing salary. Don't get me wrong. Home is home. I miss home. But this country gives you the exposure. As I said, I talk to people from all walks of life. At work as a nurse, dealing with my patients and my co-workers, and as a content creator where people nurses have got an opportunity and they come and run it by me look at this contract for me look at this job offer what do you think i interact with people based on somebody's invention somebody invented internet and i'm a beneficiary of that because of internet i make income on youtube because i'm this thing i'm in this country so the fact that you say i'm in america alone carries weight the reverence the respect even if you're down that head, people think you're smart because you live in America or because you have an accent. So there are so many reasons why I love this country. It has its up and downs. We mean so we don't have the stress system, we don't have the house nobody used to have, we don't have the gate man and the chef and all this stuff. But America makes you think beyond the box. Living abroad actually makes you think beyond the box. You will do discover talents that you have that you didn't even know you had i didn't know i could stand in a studio and be talking to people and editing videos and sharing videos and forming a consult and running this business and going here and there i didn't know i had that but something drove me to social media and years down the lane it's become like a passive income for me i wouldn't have thought of that in my life that i'll be here and talking to you and sharing these things with you so as i said being a nurse already gives you the ticket to explore other countries luxembourg spain singapore wherever it gives the exposure i used not to be the vacation person travel and see here and there but just distressing taking a walk going to the beach little little events activities just watching flowers go watering flowers watering your lawn mowing your lawn plowing ice those things are just fun and um, they don't have to wait for anybody to do them for you. They're like therapeutic in one way or the other, thanks to America. The system is so structured that you can sit at your home and still make an income. You can sit at home and still work. You can work, create content and still make money thanks to internet and those who created it. You can be here and reach out to friends miles away. You can see your loved ones via the internet. Makes life easy. They know you are okay. You know they are okay. There are so many works, jobs you can do sitting at home. You can work for the call center. Thanks to COVID, there are so many remote jobs. You can work whilst raising your kid and they are you're working from home. You can change jobs. And an average American will move eight times in their life before they die. As in getting up and packing up and leave. Moving from New York to Ohio, Arizona, whatever. An average American will do that about eight times in their life. Housing accommodation is not a problem. You can never go scroll to YouTube, UK er, YouTubers, without talking about accommodation struggle. You can live in whatever you want to live in. You can drive whatever you want to drive. So far as you can afford it, mortgage, loan, whatever whatever size of room you want a beachfront property a lakefront property you want a small room a studio you want to live on a 90 feet floor in new york city and be watching downtown manhattan you can do whatever you want to do it's a free country literally you hear them say it's a free country america makes you manage time time management works at seven o'clock you gotta be there 15 minutes before seven o'clock there's nothing like the african man time or the Ghana man time you are late for your appointment. You are out. You have to wait in line and get rescheduled for about three months before you get another appointment to go into wherever you're trying to go. You are late. You are a, day, a dollar short. It's a basic saying. It's a beautiful country. 
there are 50 states there are other territories that i'm yet to conquer with my blue passport yeah 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 i've had this for a while by the way i just didn't talk about it and the seasons i happen to be in new york where i see four seasons and they are entirely different the spring autumn winter the flowers booming, rain falling, it's hailing, ice, snow, the seasons are changing, the leaves are colorful. It's just a beautiful country. The things that you, people, you wouldn't even think of, like a heated pavement. It's snowing and the ice hits the pavement and the ice melts. I'm standing there so marveled. Who thought of that? Who thought of putting a heating system under the pavement blocks? Water fountains in the park, chairs in the park, you sit down and uh, you have a good time. There are birds, squirrels, whatever running around, the wind is blowing. It's just a beautiful country. The architecture, the history behind it, the buildings, the skyscrapers, if you want the old houses. Maintenance culture to its peak. You enter a house and it tell you this house is 111 years old. I've shared a video of a house store I did, the house was 111 years old and you didn't know, you think it was built about 20 years ago. Maintenance culture. That little things we are learning and are learning, we don't even know, but you're interacting with people from all over the world. Different races, different color, different accent, different food. The culture, the diversity, it's impeccable. I'm talking personally about America like this because it is what it is. High time people having doubts, people making videos about don't come to America, this and that and that. What I always say that you don't know it until you explore it. Whatever it is, just come. Come if it's not working for you one month, one year, six months, whatever. You can pack up your bag and go back to another country or go back home or something. But you cannot just write it off because of what people are saying. As I keep saying, don't get me wrong, it's not all rosy here. But the best thing that happened to me is being in America and becoming an American. Come, if it's not working for you, you can go. How will I raise my kids? Mass shooting, whatever. The chance to homeschool your kids is also there. The adults who are homeschooling, thanks to COVID and everything, Zoom and you are just learning at home. But we need that human interaction as well. That interaction with co-workers, fun co-workers, annoying co-workers is also there. There's a hybrid system where some offices you do like two days in the office and three days out of the office. You can always find a working hour that merges because the country never sleeps. Life is going on 24-7. The restaurants are open 24-7. Everything is going on. Hospitals, schools, whatever. Every business is going on. People are investing in this economy. Even though there are some currencies that are powerful or heavier than the U.S. dollar. Most countries stay the U.S. dollar. No country is using, oh, I'm sending this for 20 Canadian dollar. You just hear American dollar. That is how the currency carries weight. Do you need more convincing? America is a beautiful country. If nothing at all, get a B2 visitor's visa and come and visit and see whether you like it or not. But even if you visit, you wouldn't get a perspective as in living here, work, waking up, plowing snow, driving to work, paying bills, raising kids here, doing business here. You won't see that. If you are a tourist, you have a different angle. If you are a student, you have a different angle. But if you live in here, working here and paying bills, you have a different, deeper perspective. But it's better than nothing. If you have a chance to visit, you should visit. Once more, these are my personal opinions. You can choose to come to America or not. It's not for me. I'm just one of its citizens. There are different categories of visas that America offers. So many categories. I think I came to CR1. I've applied for B2B4. Before. I've applied for K1 before. I've applied for all type of visas. There are different categories. Some you just come for health treatment. Some you come as a tourist. You come to do business. You, are, you come as a domestic stuff. You come to the visa lottery system, work visa, so many visa categories are there. You would have to read intensively or extensively and know which one you qualify for and apply as such and apply for your loved ones. 
most of the jobs that will bring you over will bring you over with your kids and your extended family members and all they have opportunity to live here. Someone said to me, the uncertainty back home in Africa is a lot because I don't know if my kid will go to that 5,000 city school and at the end become somebody or find a job. But I know that in America, so far as they go to school and do what they're supposed to do, they will find something to fend for themselves and take the burden off me. You not you don't go to bed thinking, oh, what if my child finishes and doesn't find a job? But there are so many educated, unemployed graduates sitting at home. The sad part, there are so many healthcare workers. I interviewed a nurse who's been sitting at home for four years now, yet to be posted by the government to go work when these countries are suffering from shortage and they are looking for nurses to fill it up, they're actually willing to offer you sign up bonus. Come work for us. Take $15,000 and come work for us. We'll buy you a ticket. We'll bring your family. We'll do this. We'll do that. Some of them, my workplace, Priscilla, do you know a nurse? Refer a nurse and get 5000 for referring a nurse. Just like that. This is the best country and this is the best thing that happened to me. I have not reached any of my goals yet as to the things I want to do, but the things I have achieved in this short time I've been in America has been a blessing. I could not have achieved that work in 60 years in my country. I love my country, don't get me wrong, but the reality has to be said. How much is the nurse's salary? The houses are being priced in USD. You see a house in this Legon, $500,000. You see a land, $150,000. How many years can a nurse work and save their salary to buy a land for $150,000? And how would they build on that land? So those of us in diaspora are the ones who end up coming and buying such properties, such buildings, lands, and real estate because we're the ones who can afford it. The lay teacher cannot afford that. The lay teacher, engineer, lecturer, whatever cannot afford that. The people who can afford that are only politicians and fraudsters and people stealing from each other. You cannot work as a teacher or a nurse and afford a $150,000 land. Not even a $10,000 land. And then you go on retirement and you go take chicken feed at home. A pensioner, a retiree in Ghana will not be taking home not even 200 USD at the end of the month. You work so much, you look after your kids, you have nothing to show for it, you have no business plan, no investment, no building, you are still a tenant. And then when you retire, you hope to get some money and do some small building and you start a foundation and you're stuck. And then the next day, he's had a stroke and he's dead and gone. The system is not enabling. This land is a land of equalizer. It propels you, it gives you a voice. I was very quiet. I gained my voice in the 100. It's a story for another day. But the uh, amount of confidence I have acquired living in America. Because you got to be able to be vocal. You got to speak for yourself. Nobody's going to speak for you. The patients are going to intimidate you. And you have to let them know you know your stuff. People are going to look down on you because of your accent, before you, because of your skin color. You have to prove yourself three times. You got to put in the work. You have to come home and read and read and read like a fresh nursing student. Because the task ahead is high. The person you're going to meet is going to be tough. They're going to doubt you because you don't look like somebody who knows their stuff. And so they begin to relay. Well, like, oh, this nurse is really good. She knows what she's talking about. So we have to put in extra work. You have to be confident. You have to look them in the face. You have to answer questions. If you don't know, I'm sorry I don't know, I will look into it. I'm sorry this is not my job description. I will get you the provider to tell you what it is. Know your job description and stick to it. Don't go and put yourself in any tight corner. I don't know it all. I'm still working on my confidence. I'm not even there yet. But uh, doing this YouTube alone has given me that screen confidence. And I'm able to speak for myself. You should always know how to advocate for yourself because nobody will. Package yourself well. Respect yourself. Carry yourself how you want to be addressed. I've always been sassy. I've always been a diva. I've always been a lady. Those who know me will say that. I like to be respected a lot. So I try to respect people too. Ooh, breathe. Let me take this off. So you see me eyeball for eyeball. So as I said, there are so many reasons why America supersedes 
other countries. I haven't had a chance to travel to other countries, but everybody else is coming here. China, India, Nepal, Uzbekistan, Iran, Iraq, Bosnia, Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, Zambia, Tanzania. There's nobody that would give a US visa and they will turn it down. You get it. I am blessed to be in this country. I am blessed the opportunity that America has given me so far. As I said, I, ha I came to America because America gave somebody a chance to come to Ghana to find me and bring me to America. I am blessed to be an American. It's not rosy here. We pray for God's protection as we go in and come out. That will come home safely. We cancel all evil thoughts, all evil plans, all accidents and shootings and stuff. It's grace that is overlooking all of us. If you believe in that, fine. If not, you can stick to whatever you believe in. This is what I'm speaking for myself. As I said, this is very raw and edited. This is not about this migration and everything. This is just my reality of living in America, what I've experienced so far, what America has done for me. And I'll never downplay that. I am grateful to God for this opportunity and forever I'll be grateful. My life is never going to be the same because I found myself here. The life of people around us will never be the same because we find ourselves here. My friend just said a few minutes on a phone call that um, because she came to America, she has not given anybody money or anything, but she's been a motivation for her co-workers and her family members who are all now researching about how to travel abroad. And a few of them have made the move to UK and other countries because they know, oh, Linda left. How did she leave? What did she do? Oh, there's an opportunity for her for someone to do what she did. Then I'll look into it. And true as people are learning to migrate. Some will say it's brain drain. No. Not everybody will migrate. Abroad is not meant for everybody. People are being born daily. People are dying daily. Spaces are being filled. And we'll acquire all this knowledge and we'll go back home and invest in the country. We'll go back and establish things. Recently, I saw a home care that has been run in Ghana, Advanced Ghana, Advanced Care or something. Shout out to the owner. She went to UK, grabbed that knowledge, went back home and established something that is helping the elderly and the aged. All these fancy things that have been built in back home or invested, people have done. It's knowledge they come abroad to acquire and go back and invest. And this is our prayer that we also learn something go back home and build our economy and that uh, we pray for leaders who are visionary leaders who are not greedy who are not self-centered who are not myopic leaders who will see beyond 10 20 30 years leaders who will come and lead the countries that we come from turn the countries around make the life of citizens better create jobs improve upon the educational system because there are so many people who are smarter and talented than us and they did not get the opportunity we have. It's just by grace some of us have it and we pray that the economy will be restructured to suit people like that who are working hard, struggling somewhere and are not being recognized. They could have become 10 times bigger than what they are but the system is not enabling enough. So if you have the chance to relocate, take it. Don't worry about childcare. Education is free from five and above. College, you pay student loans. Back home, everything is cash and carry. If you don't have money, you go to the hospital, you will die. You pay for the extra before you have it done. You buy the medicine before the nurse will give it to you. You even go and buy your own debt or you buy your own gloves before they can nurse your own family member. This one, they will treat you. And then they will send the bill and you have a payment plan and split it over the month and be paying hundred, hundred, hundred dollars for how many years you can pay it. It is not cash and carry system. A system that is cash and carry suffers. If you want to own a car, you have to save up and go and buy a car. 100000 to this, $10,000, all in your purse before you go and buy it. Buy that. If you want your child to go to school, you got to pay the school fees up front, out of pocket, before the child can go to school. So if you can't afford, the child is going to be home. If they go and they owe money, they sack them to go back home. 
is that an enabling economy? So many brilliant children that are home and they cannot be in school because their parents don't have the ability to be able to afford. Shout out to my mom and dad, John and Mercy. They were just simple civil servant workers, saved so much, S took all of the four of us to the university, paid cash, and we are where we are today. Shout out to any parent that is struggling to see their kids through school. Kids, please listen. Make your parents proud. Become somebody and remember them. Don't forget them. We have family issues, drama here and there. But uh, our parents, if they've been there for us, we need to be there for them as well. And that sense of entitlement from family members because people are abroad. They're going to call you 24-7. Learn to control that. You are the architect of your own life. Know which, who you are helping and who you are not helping and what you are giving to who. At your own terms and convenience. Because when you are abroad and something happens to you, it's all going to be on you. Nobody's going to change Naira and send to you in USA. Nobody's going to change CDs and send to you in USA. So whilst you are here, make sure you're comfortable abroad. Your house should be as comfortable as possible. Your car should be comfortable. You should be comfortable in your job and your office, wherever. Before you are build, before you build that ten bedroom house somewhere that you don't live, even if it's for rental, it can't amount to anything. If you rent it for ten thousand dollars, it's still not going to be carry, carry weight. And how many people can afford that? So make sure you're comfortable here. Make good use of all the opportunities. I don't know it all. I'm still learning. I'm still interacting. I'm still learning the things that will work for me. I'm still learning what to invest in, how to invest in myself, and all that stuff. But America brought me here today that I'm doing this video. Grateful for every opportunity. It's not been, my journey has not been easy, okay? I've been through hell. One day I'll sit down and tell you all about my story and the struggles I've been through. But I'm still alive. It's just a miracle. Ah. So, if you're still doubting, I'm 65. Can I still relocate? I'm alone, I'm married, can I still relocate? I'm this, I'm that, can I still travel? You can go anywhere if you want to. Go test it out. If it's not working for you, worst case scenario, pack up your bag and go. When you're living, make sure you do like a year. Live without paying on your job. Do not resign entirely. That's what I did because I'm coming to a land of unknown. What if something goes wrong and I have to go back home? So I did not resign my job. I took a year, live without pay. So you can do that as well. The choice is yours. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Air your opinions. If you want to share your abroad diaries, reach out to me. Let me feature you on my channel. Come tell people your story, your migration story. is not easy to migrate. It's so expensive. It's so stressful. It's so frustrating. Waiting for a visa interview dates, gathering your documents, going to the cafe, printing this. It's a lot. <laughs> it just didn't fall on my lap. I went to hell. I shared that journey before. My visa has been denied three times. I got it on a third time. I shared it before while I was walking in the snow recently. I am grateful for watching. Uh, share this video with others. Enroll with US Iron Party Consult. If you are a registered nurse, midwife, psychiatry nurse who wants to work in USA and don't know where to start from, I will show you where to start from and how to go about it. Come join me in America and come share your story. Take care. Bye-bye. Love one another.